about 17 kilometers to the south of Bangalore city and 3 kilometers off the Kanakpura main road, the city bustle suddenly gives way to a quiet wilderness and a new experience, the Valley School in a 100-acre campus. The school buildings here occupy just about 2% of the area. Dense vegetation, a variety of flora and fauna and a stream meandering through the wilderness. A wilderness which was mostly a dry grazing land just 35 years ago. How did this transformation take place? school Land care is part of the students' learning program in the school. They participate in maintaining a kitchen garden and herb gardens and take care of the land in many other ways. Protecting the boundary from fire is also an important part of the land care program. We have been doing this for many years. 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 Nanaritia Maragolan Belsi Ule Mudinigidagolo Sigute Namge, Ule Upeagan Agute, Itara, Cardigal and Alamarade, Ule Cardano Belsi Beconta, Nano Gelcolta. Efforts taken by the Valley School over the last 30 years in water conservation, land care, afforestation and other programs, there, is, there has been natural regeneration of a variety of habitats within the school campus. In fact, what you see here behind is an open scrub forest with grassland and one cannot believe when you see it that even eight years back that this was a barren land. But with continuous efforts in fire protection and other activities, this is now slowly regenerating into a small scrub forest. The stream bed which had got silted due to construction work outside the campus was taken up for revival as an ongoing project. By allowing for rejuvenation of wilderness, a rich diversity of life has got preserved here naturally. Students and scientists have documented about 120 species of trees, 200 species of birds, 80 varieties of butterflies, 150 medicinally important plants and a rich diversity of other insects. This is a thickly wooded region and you find this on either side of the stream bed all along the school and near the water bodies. The plants 
as you can see are extremely tall. There are many, many varieties of trees here. The canopy cover is very thick. Uh, some of the common trees here are uh, well, both the varieties of Jamun, Eugenia jambulana and Cyzizium cumini. You have uh, many species of ficus like this wild fig, ficus glomerata. You have real tall Pongemia trees. Quite a few mango varieties, guava, tamarind, fruit trees of that kind. And a variety of acacia species like acacia suma, acacia consina and many more. What you see here are the cormorant, black-winged kite, large-pied wagtail, rock python, wine snake, a palm civet, and elephants. Plants and water have a symbiotic relationship. A healthy vegetation cover protects the soil and preserves water bodies and vice versa. The natural slopes and undulations at the valley has helped us to devise a very good and effective rainwater harvesting system. On the eastern side, there is a large area which was basically a dry tank bed when the school started way back in 1978. But after efforts um, uh, to desilt it, it has been converted to a lake, which is now a perennial water body. It's about half a square kilometer. And uh, we've also constructed a wall there with a weir so that the water from the lake can be allowed to flow into a stream. And the stream from the lake flows and feeds into this water body that you see here, which we call the chick dam or the bund. Now, when there is rain and when there is a steady input from the lake, water flows over this chick dam wall and feeds another stream that goes northward. Now, on going northward, there is another water body that has been constructed. So, we have three water bodies and the naturally flowing streams that ensure the constant storage and flow of water. Now you will see three things that have happened because of this water. The groundwater has automatically been recharged. You also see that all these microhabitats have become very rich in their diversity of flora and fauna. We have a number of amphibians and reptiles and insects like the water scorpions. <laughs> We believe that uh, the future of humanity is in wilderness because wilderness is not organized, it is nature made, it has its own naturalness and man is a part of all this big picture which is there and our intention is that this is what a, ch a child should receive and some feel of nature they will definitely inherit uh, in their uh, brains and in their minds. Silence is something extraordinary, something that comes naturally when you're watching, when you're watching without motive, without any kind of demand. Without silence, it's very difficult for human beings to understand oneself and or to understand others. And so everywhere, the fabric that remains common is nature. And perhaps wilderness expresses itself in the best way as far as nature is concerned. And that's the attempt of ours in uh, this education at the right school. If you have no relationship with nature, you have no relationship with man. Nature is the meadows, the groves, the rivers, 
all the marvelous earth, the trees, and the beauty of the earth. If we have no relationship with that, we shall have no relationship with each other.